it's kind of now or never, you know, you just need to make it in. So I'm Carl Russell and I organised a charity paddle which was a 38 mile prone paddle which means we were paddling on lifeguard rescue boards which are 10 foot 6 long uh, and we were paddling land down and up on our knees using our arms uh, to propel ourselves so not stand up paddle boarding but actually uh, prone paddle boarding on rescue boards um, we went from Campbelltown Arnolai station uh, in Scotland to the Arnolai station in Red Bay uh, at Cushendall uh, and the distance was 38 miles, it was across the North Channel um, so it's known to be one of the deadliest channels in the world and the hardest channels to cross which is why we needed a, a proper safety team with us and uh, to cover all bases when we were looking at doing this uh, in terms of the safety uh, and our navigation across the channel. Uh, but yeah, never been done before, uh, and it was a, a team of four of us, uh, all paddling the same distance of 38 miles. Um, so we had myself, uh, we had Colin Waters, uh, we had Jamie Russell, who's my brother, uh, and we had Connell McBurdy as well. Um, all really good watermen, uh, and understand the ocean and how it works and have a lot of experience in the sea uh, and a background in surfing, uh, lifeguarding and uh, Colm is also one of the RNI uh, lifeboat crew members. The idea for this event came from meeting a lovely couple called John and Nora McCauley. They told us their story which was pretty touching about their son passing away uh, with sudden death syndrome. So John wanted to put together an event to raise money for the air ambulance uh, for Northern Ireland and we thought that we would help out by putting together a team um, and create our own event where we could uh, put those funds towards uh, John's charity of choice. So the two charities that we were fundraising for were the Air Ambulance Northern Ireland and the RNLI. Uh, Air Ambulance obviously because we had that connection with uh, John McCauley and that was the charity of choice that he wanted to raise funds for. Uh, also the RNLI in the past I've worked as a senior lifeguard for them. Um, so I wanted to show a bit of respect to the RNLA as well and their two life-saving charities that actually coincide with each other now and again. Uh, so those are the two charities that we're raising funds for. So for example, the costs for running these charities, if the RNLA are to launch their ALB, which is their all-weather lifeboat, so the big orange lifeboat that they have, uh, the cost for actually just launching that alone is around £6,000. The Air Ambulance Northern Ireland, to actually run their service for one day costs £5,500. So big expenses on both the charities to run them, which is why we're trying to help out with the two life-saving charities. So the main issues whenever I was planning this event uh, was to actually coincide everything. So things like our tidal streams, so the currents that were going to be either pushing against us or with us, um, working those out, which was uh, done by our navigation uh, advisor, Neil Young. Um, coinciding these with high tides and low tides and the times of when we could leave and the times of when we were going to finish. We were trying to plan this so that we could paddle in the hours of, of daylight to make it safer. 
and also within our waiting period, which is between the 5th and the 14th of August, getting two safety boats in that time frame because we had a waiting period but we were only able to say like quite late notice when the conditions were best okay we're going to go on this date but obviously two boats needed to be free on the date that we selected with maybe two or three days notice so those are the main issues of actually organizing it uh, and allowing those things to sync together on the day that we selected on the day of our event before we were going to paddle i think we were all a little bit nervous i myself was nervous but not nervous in our ability or our physical shape to do the paddle i was more nervous about what we were going to encounter when we got out into the open ocean on the channel we had everything covered to lower the risk with safety boats and a navigation team uh, checking when we should leave and what the tidal streams are going to be doing as we were paddling but there was still part of me was thinking what are we going to encounter when we get out here are there going to be currents that we're not sure of how they're going to uh, how they're going to move when we're out there or how they're going to affect us so really just the conditions were making me slightly nervous before we started um, and the distance that we're recovering as well is a big paddle um, but I knew that we could do it. As we were doing the paddle, when we started off, like the conditions that we selected on the day were, it was like a dream. It, you know, it couldn't have really been any better for us. Uh, the start of the paddle was like sheet glass, no wind, 20 to 25 degrees. Um, and the tidal streams, so the currents were with us and pushing us. When we got past Sanda Island, apparently our navigation, uh, the guy that was navigating for us, uh, Neil Young, he was able to watch us live on Strava. So he was able to sit in his computer and watch where we were and how fast we were traveling. Um, he said we shot past Sanda Island like a slingshot, so it sent us out in the middle of the channel very fast. Once we passed that point, we actually were stuck in one fixed position for about an hour and he said that we weren't really moving. Um, so that became a bit of an issue but because he was able to track us live we were speaking to him on the phone um, we actually got advice from him to move out of that area where we're stuck in a strange tidal stream um, to head more south which brought us out of that area um, and sent us more away from where the tidal stream was pulling us um, but towards the end of our paddle uh, we also had a, a period of time where we weren't sure if we would make it into um, our finish point uh, which became a little bit of an issue as well um, but 
we towards the end made it in um, with enough time and of daylight as well. I didn't at any point want to give up because I'm not really like that. Of, I'm not gonna give up on something that I've planned to do. Um, I look at every other option apart from from giving up or adjusting our plans slightly so we can achieve the goal. Um, but there was times where it was definitely hard for me the last sort of 10 to 5 miles towards the finish was the hardest and uh, I could feel my muscles starting to tighten up um, and restricting my paddle movement and I was starting to get a little bit cold as well um, but I knew that we were going to do it the things when it got hard for me that, that kept me going was thinking about uh, the charities that we were raising money for and like how much they would get out of us raising that money for them. Uh, also the Macaulay the family and just the people that were supporting us. And and also people that maybe thought that we weren't able to do it and it wasn't wasn't possible. That sort of that drives me. Um, people saying potentially it can't be done. Uh, I'm the first team to do anything like that. We we were the first uh, group of paddlers, prone paddlers to do that ever. So that drove me. The challenge in total took us 10 hours, 45 minutes, which was 38 miles from Campbelltown RMI station to the RMI station in Red Bay, Cushendall. Uh, coming back in to land at the finish, it was quite emotional. We could see the, the crowds um, on the slipway and yeah, we were just, we were all exhausted. And it was a bit of a relief, to be honest, because you know I wanted to make sure that everyone was safe and we completed the challenge successfully. But yeah, for me it was a bit more of a relief that we'd, we'd done it. I always knew that we were going to do it, but actually coming into the finish, and we'd done it in daylight hours as well, so we didn't spend too much time in darkness. Um, big relief and just proud and happy and emotional to see everyone there as well and to raise money for the, the charities uh, that were involved. What this means to me and the team to finish this is we were able to put something that was just an idea at the start into action and actually complete it and successfully complete it. Um, it means a lot because we've raised money um, for two life-saving charities and it's actually going to benefit both of them um, and to put in that amount of effort and actually to achieve the goal is pretty special with a team of like my, like my best friends uh, so yeah it means a lot and it meant a lot for me to see the Macaulay family John and uh, Maura were at the finish uh, on the slipway waiting for us and uh, with other people, crowds of other people and uh, people from the RMI station and, and uh, Cushendall were there as well.